the second paragraph, since I only want it to appear on the full site, I can wrap that guy in a PHP of statement. So, if the browser version equals full, I don't have an if around this one because I want it to show regardless. This guy, though, I only want to show if, if we're on the full version. So, let's save it. So, the conditional statements for things you want to disappear or... The conditional statement is stuff that you don't want to appear all the time but you want to appear based on some condition. And that condition could be I want it to appear if it's on a mobile version. The condition could be I want it to appear on the mobile, or I'm sorry, the full version of it. So depending on which way, you know, you could ask either of the two questions. Right now, there's only two uh, uh, options. We're only identifying if it's a full browser or a mobile browser. Um, to do more than that, it's going to take Werfel, which is going to be our next topic. All right. With Werfel, we can fine-tune our user agent detection to find things like, is it a phone? Can I make a phone call on it? And sort of things uh, along that line. Okay, so now we go back to here. On the full version, we have two paragraphs. On the mobile version, we ought to just have the one. And sure enough, we just have the one. Now, you, yeah, you had mentioned images. You know, any HTML you can imagine, you can put um, in there. Um, let's see if I have an image out there already. Pick that JM. Yeah. Let's say we only want that to, fail, to appear on the full site. Well, assuming I want it to appear after that paragraph, I can just include that here. do. 
to make it fit. Couldn't you state that as 100% or 100 yeah. pixels? We could, we, could do a, we could do a couple different ways. We could, through our style, make the width of this guy 100% or 70% or whatever we wanted to, and that would work. The other thing we could do is we could substitute a different image if we wanted. We could maybe have an edited version of this if we wanted to. Picture2.jpg. And then have if desktop, use image1. If mobile, use image2. So um, what I'll do is, and, and again, the difference being is that if I style it, I'm still downloading the full size of the image. Whereas if I made a second image, I'm only downloading a smaller image. You follow what I'm saying? This image is however many bytes it is. Pic.jpg is, it's not that big. It's 52KB. Yeah, so it's not that big. But if it was a gigantic image, maybe then you wouldn't want to style it. But yeah, I can go and as part of my mobile style rule, again, which is an embedded style, but it would be better as an external style. We, we all know that. I could say image width, we'll make it not the full width, we'll make it 80%. So it's not quite right on the edge. So save. All right. Now the desktop version is going to look the same again. And the difference being that this guy I'm not sure if it's not loading or if it's loading and it's just not getting the image. Let's do this with I don't know what I was doing wrong with that, but with the by, by making the, the smaller size, it was able to then show the image smaller um, that way. The eighty percent should have worked. I'm not sure if I typoed on that or what. Um, at any rate, we can do that now. Again, keep in mind that this is just you know the idea. Of this goes. You know, you can go crazy with this idea, right? Because you can add divs, you could add whole sections of the page, you could add sidebars, you could add, you know, you could add a second column with other information if you wanted. Anything that you want to do, you can do um, by this basic technique. So this begs a question then, all right? If I can have everything in one file, why would I use browser redirection to split them to two different files. Why do we even bother talking about that? I always joke we're crazy in school. Like, they teach you the hard way, then they teach you an easy way. All right? Go ahead. What are you going to say? Uh, just, I guess, initially off the top of my head, it, it, it almost, I, I 
think this is an, an awesome feature, but uh, it, it would occur to me if, if we got a very too intricate design simultaneously, it yeah. would be like almost be like speaking French and German at the same time, where at least with two separate space pages I could focus on like pure German versus pure Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a great analogy. Um, the idea is, is how much different do you want to make the mobile versus a desktop? If it has a totally different layout and totally different things, then the question is, you know, do you want one really complicated page or two fairly straightforward pages? Which is easier to maintain? And you can't answer that in general. Sometimes the two simple ones are going to be easier to maintain. Sometimes the one complicated one is going to be uh, uh, easier to maintain. Especially if, you know, so if there's like little tweaks here and there. You have this in, in one but not in the other. Yeah, okay, maybe you just put it all in one. But if there's truly like gigantic design differences between that, um, you could, you know, you could do that. No, I mean, I can, I can definitely see the advantage right. of having a universal page. Right. Uh, right. Because some, some, some aesthetic designs would lend themselves both yeah, ways. Yeah, exactly. Um, in addition, a couple things to keep in mind with this. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, it, it's just the nature, the nature of the 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 thing that you would go and do that. I, I think my head was going a couple different directions at the same time. One thing I did want to illustrate is if we do a view source on this page, remember all we see is the HTML code that got sent to the browser. We don't see any of that PHP code. That PHP code is recipe. It's not finished product. All right. So we don't see any of those PHP instructions. We just see what the, what the server finally decided to send to the browser. So we don't see any of those if statements. We see the results of those if statements. Oh, I know one thing I was going to say. Um, the question of whether it, it the, the problem with two pages, of course, is that you have duplicated content. Right? You could potentially have duplicated content. Remember, the include files and putting things in external files sort of gets around that issue. Because if I were doing this page, and if I were creating a separate page for mobile versus desktop, I might put some of this content, for example, this paragraph in an include file, and just point both of the pages to that include file. So, by careful design, um, by careful design, you can sort of mitigate uh, the, the drawbacks. And, and it's funny, the word design means different things depending on the context and depending on, uh, you know, who's using it and when and, and what the topic is. Both in terms of either way that you do this, if you do it all in one page or if you do it uh, in two separate pages, if you take a minute to think about it, now I know we don't know tons about PHP in this class, but as you learn more about PHP, you can look and even though it's one complicated page, you can clean up the code so it's not quite as ugly looking, all right, if that makes any sense, all right. Um, and if we're doing two separate page, by, by, by strategically picking the stuff that you're going to put in include files, you can get around the issue of having duplicated content in that. So either way, yeah, you know, the ideal situation, you know, having a complicated page or two simple pages that you have to change, both of those pose challenges for updating it. But you can mitigate some of those challenges if you take some time and think about it and, and design it not on a graphic design level, but on a code design level of, of structuring your code in a certain way that will lend itself to be easier to be maintained. Questions about this. So where does Werfel come in? I was actually going to start talking about Werfel today, but I decided that 
it would be better to prefix the discussion of Werfel with this discussion. And if we didn't get through Werfel, we can always talk about it more next week. All right. What is Werfel other than a really bad sounding word, <laughs> dumb sounding word? What, what, what does Werfel give us? Let's put it that way. Does anyone recall? I know we kind of had a false alarm trying it out. I try, we, we tried to do it, but the server needed updating, and then we finally got that taken care of. So what does Werfel give to us? Anyone recall? I don't even remember what it is. Okay. Well, good. Let's review it then. What Werfel gives to us is a smarter, more featured version of this. In other words, this little script that we downloaded from the techmobilebrowsers.com can tell you if it's a mobile device or not. That's it. That's all that script does. That's pretty good. <laughs> all right. I'm not, not uh, uh, going to criticize it. But all it does is tell us, hey, is this a mobile device or not? There's sometimes that, though, you know, though the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that all mobile devices aren't the same. A big old tablet over there is a mobile device. This tiny little, probably most inexpensive Android phone you can get is also a mobile device. All right? So not all mobile devices are the same. You can make phone calls from some mobile devices. You can't make phone calls from all of them. Right? You can't make phone calls from your Nintendo DS, which you can browse the internet with. Right? Uh, but you can make phone calls from a phone. All right. What Werfel does is Werfel gives us a more complete description. It allows us to access a more complete description of the user agent so that we can customize content for that user agent. This browser detect script can tell us, is it mobile, yes or no. Werfel can answer, answer a whole bunch of questions about it. Now, of course that comes at a price, all right, that, you know, you don't get nothing for free. This was a simple download, that code. I went to their website, I downloaded the code, I pasted it in my, my page, I was good to go, all right. You have to install Werfel, you have to set up Werfel on your machine. All right, uh, and by your machine, I mean your web server. So, um, my suggestion is, is we don't have a Werfel assignment this week. We're likely to have something about Werfel next week. My suggestion would be to uh, only test that on, on the server that we have here. Because, again, unless you want to go through the hassle of, of installing Werfel on your machine, um, uh, again, it's probably best off just to test it here. All right. Let's look at... So what I did, in a nutshell, is I went out and I put some of the Werfel files out on my web server in a folder that I called Werfel. These are all files that you get when you download the Werfel package. It's a whole bunch of stuff that you get. Um, quick question. Mm -hmm. So I don't leave my, uh, my sentence empty in my notes. Mm -hmm. um, Werfel, um, it also it detects more things and more things such as, like, device size? Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll see an example of all the different kinds of things. Okay. But it, it gives us more information about the user agent than simply is it mobile or not. Okay. 
So, we have these files, I put them out on the web server, I then wrote a quick example to look at it, and it's uh, actually a Werfel test code, we'll look at that in a second here. I get these warnings. You can just ignore them. Usually if you hit refresh, they go away. All right. I, I have not troubleshooted why we're getting those warnings, so but they don't seem to hurt anything. All right. This is telling us information about the user agent. All right. And it knows that this is not a mobile device. This appears to be the standard response that it gives you if it doesn't notice a, a, a mobile device, with the only difference being that the specifics of the browser. Let's view this guy on a, an actual mobile device, because that's what it's, that's what Werfel is really meant for. So let's go and let's run test. The computer resolution isn't 800 by 600, is it? No, I just said this. This appears to be the generic response it gives you if you're running a desktop browser. In other words, that stuff doesn't appear to be filled in on desktop browsers. All right. Here's the same thing on this device. You can pass it around. Here, if you notice, the screen resolution is correct. Let me pull it up on these other devices. and goofy. It's giving me the wrong resolution on this, this too. I don't know if that's a bug in that or if something isn't configured right. At any rate, I have some information about it. And I can go in and I'll have to troubleshoot this to find out um, exactly what the, what the details are. Is this one right? No, I don't think that one's right okay. either. I didn't, I didn't think yeah. so. Um, I know I know if you look, there's a whole set, and, and, and what makes me suspicious that there's a, a, a configuration issue is that warning message that I got. It keeps track of like devices that have tried to access this site, and it keeps a little library of them, and I'm wondering if somehow that's messed up, so it's giving erroneous results. I'll have to spend some time troubleshooting that. Um, but as you can see, in general terms, it did right, even if some of the details were wrong. All right, that explains something else I noticed, um, so I'll, I'll troubleshoot that. Now, what's an example of a piece of functionality that you could implement on a page that you need to know a little bit more about it to really, more than the fact that it's mobile versus desktop? And the example that they use in the book is making a phone call. All right. You can't make a phone call on every mobile device. All right. I can't make a phone call on this browser, this this computer. All right, a traditional phone call that is. All right. But I can make one on the phone. So I have a little snippet of code here. That when I view it on a device.
device that can't make a phone call, it displays just a text message saying, call me at that. This phone isn't activated. I'm actually going to do this for my... I didn't bring my phone. Darn it. I left it at home. Shoot. You'll have to trust me uh, on this. We'll do it. We'll do it Monday. Um, I, 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 I promise we'll, we'll do that Monday. A bag full of bubbles device. Yeah, right. And I forgot my own. Darn, I forgot the fifth one. Yeah, exactly. This, on the other hand, even though it's not activated, it knows that I am on a phone. So it's the same page. This one displays text that says, call me. And if this phone was activated, if I press the link, it's getting ready to dial. All right. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Now, it won't, it won't go through because uh, this, this isn't activated. But on my phone, if I then just pressed call, it would call. All right. Let's look to see how that that works. So, so how that happens. So realistically, we could have a page designed so that one of the links would actually dial someone. Would actually call it, provided that that they have that set up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at the, at the code that does this because it's really bare bones, but it does illustrate the point. You have a problem if you try to open something that was saved in a on a Mac in Windows. It um, I'll, I'll just add it. I'll open it with Notepad plus plus. That'll work. All right. So for this to work, two things have to be true. I have to have wor the Werfel files and stuff installed on my web server. I then need to, to point this page to the configuration file so that it can find all the Werfel stuff. All right? Believe me, this is something you'd set up once and not worry about it. So don't be intimidated by any of that verbiage. If we want to look at the we want to look quickly at the Werfel configuration file. Essentially, what it is doing is, is defining, really, these are the two lines that you have to tweak when you're installing it. Is defining where to find those files on my web server. They're installed in einetpub wwwwerfel, and the other files are installed in another place. And that might be a problem because I think I missed a directory in here. But anyhow, we'll we'll troubleshoot that later. So uh, realistically, I for example for me, I have a an account with GoDaddy. Uh -huh. I could get Werfel, upload it to my account with GoDaddy, and from then on, I could start taking advantage of the Werfel protocols. Probably, but, yeah. Okay. They, they, they might, you know, that's a, that's a service that they might already provide, too. It might already be installed, and, and, and you might be able to get a configuration file from them that would... Oh. That would do it for for you. So that I'm just speculating. Oh, 